A fascinating new study found that loss of muscle tissue better predicts a future cardiovascular event than does gain in fat mass over a five-year period of time. This is a fascinating study. We're going to break down and talk about these details because I think as a society, doctors, healthcare professionals, and the zeitgeist amongst the public is that you need to prevent fat gain, not so much prevent muscle loss. But this study found that there's a greater hazard ratio and a greater risk and a greater association with a five-year loss of muscle than compared to the associated increased risk with a, having a heart attack or a cardiovascular event with changes in fat mass, gain in fat mass. I want to read to you the details here and talk about what these scientists found in these thousand subjects that were tracked over the course of five years. They say specifically, compared with participants with stable fat mass percentage, those with a fat gain more than 2% over a five-year period had an increased risk for a future cardiovascular event, and the hazard ratio was 2.7%. In contrast, they say fat-free mass loss, greater than 8%, fat-free mass would be muscle tissue. So if people lose more than 8% of their muscle tissue over the course of a five-year period, this was associated with a higher risk of cardiovascular events their hazard ratio was almost double that compared to the fat gain. It was 3.83, which means that you're about 300% more likely to have a heart attack if you start losing muscle between the ages of 50 and 80. And what I learned from this paper is, you know, we lose muscle at a, at a certain rate, but a big change and a big window of unfortunate change in most people with muscle loss occurs between the years 50 and 80. And so this is why as you get older, you should focus on resistance training. You should work on lifting weights. Uh, cardio is good, but a lot of people do cardio at the expense of not having time or energy to lift weights. And that's kind of the, the thesis of this paper and supporting the health of, of muscle. Really important stuff. So let's dive into the details here. The big picture, as you can see in this image here, is there was a thousand subjects in this study. So the median age of the study subjects was 58 years old. On the low end, they were 50 years old. On the high end, they were 80 years old. And they were tracked but starting at year 2013, where they got some baseline demographic data, you know, anthropometric data, free fat mass and uh, body fat percentage. They were tracked again in 2015 and 2016. And then the follow-up was between 2021 and 2022 to see if they had a heart attack. And of the thousand subjects, 86 people had a cardiovascular event. So about 8.2% of these subjects had an event during that period of time. And the scientists say, to the best of our knowledge, this is the first study to explore the associations of changes in body composition and cardiovascular events by separating fat mass and free fat mass instead of using body mass index. Just want to give a shout out to my friend, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. She's been talking about for a very long time is, you know, we've been focusing so much on fat. And the problems with body fat, I'm guilty of this, talking about how fat tissue is a metabolically active organ, it releases adipocytokines and all this stuff. But muscle is a metabolically protective organ, releasing protective myokines. Why aren't we focusing on supporting muscle? And so Gabrielle has really been leading the charge with that. The scientists say that BMI is not accurate, so we should be looking at lean uh, tissue, fat-free mass, muscle tissue, and looking at body fat percentage, not just BMI. And they found over the course of the study is that loss of free fat mass and changes in body fat um, elevated the risk of cardiovascular events. And so they say a loss of free fat mass less than 8% was related to a 2.8 fold higher risk of cardiovascular events compared with the stable group. So the people that lifted weights, that exercised regularly, that ate sufficient proteins to support muscle protein synthesis, and didn't lose more than 8% muscle tissue, they still had an increased risk of developing a heart attack, but it was much lower compared to those who did lose more than 8% of their free fat mass or muscle tissue over the course of the, of the study period and so forth. So our findings imply that one possible reason for the negative effect of weight loss on cardiovascular disease in some research studies might be due to the loss of muscle tissue and muscle mass more than the loss of fat mass. Really important because a lot of people will diet hard, will cut calories, will do three, four, five day fasts all the time and lose muscle mass. And as some studies have found, when people lose weight, it actually might increase their risk of a cardiovascular event. And that perplexed scientists for a long time, well, how could that be? They're losing fat. How could they possibly increase their risk? Well, if that weight loss included loss of lean muscle tissue, that could increase their risk of having a heart attack. And the scientists say, more importantly, it has been demonstrated that total muscle mass peaks at the age of 24 years old. 
Afterward, muscle mass is maintained as about 10% loss occurs between the years 24 and 50. However, between the years 50 and 80, an additional 30% loss occurs. So if you're between that age category, 50 years old, between, between 50 and 80, you should be prioritizing protein. You should be prioritizing lifting weights, resistance training, and then icing on the cake would be the cardiovascular aerobic type training. But focus on resistance training. Lean muscle is now uh, independently associated with all-cause mortality or COVID outcomes, and now we have cardiovascular disease, the number one leading cause of mortality. The scientists want to say, although aging is inevitable, body composition can be contained. We can preserve muscle mass. Hence, for middle-aged and elderly uh, people who commonly experience sarcopenia, more attention should be paid to the cause of weight loss. Why are these people losing muscle? And the scientists say, our findings emphasize the importance of body composition monitoring for better cardiovascular disease prevention management. Really important stuff. So before we continue on and talk about the mechanisms and all the, the nitty gritty details and so forth, I just want to say thank you for being here. I'm really grateful that you hit that like button, that you leave a comment below, and please share this with a friend as a direct text message. We need to encourage people to lift weights. Too many people are scared of lifting weights or they have you know, unfounded fears about getting too bulky and putting on too much muscle. That, that is really unrealistic. People need to lift more weights, especially if they want to better prevent cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality. A tool that can help you if you're working out already is the electrolyte sticks that contain creatine, real salt, magnesium, potassium, taurine, and electrolytes by Myoscience. This is helpful for intra-workout applications and pre-workout applications. We know creatine helps create and foster cellular energy production in working muscles when you're resistance training or doing high-intensity interval training. There's over 410 reviews at myoscience.com. People like you who are lifting weights, trying to be healthy, are benefiting from using these around exercise, pre-workout or intra-workout. So you can check out some of the reviews and save using code podcast over at myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com, myoscience.com. Creatine really helps with energy production during resistance training, and it, and it can help you have a better workout and help you you know, maintain your strength as you age. So check that out. I'll put links below. Now let's continue on with the mechanisms. How exactly does changes or increases in fat mass and or increases in muscle tissue impact the heart? Well, the scientists say the mechanisms of obesity and muscle function in cardiovascular disease have been well-reviewed. First, excessive fat accumulation promotes the excretion of pro-inflammatory factors, including but not limited to interleukin-6, TNF-alpha, and interleukin-1, which directly damage the myocardial tissue. So we know that fat is an endocrine organ releasing pro-inflammatory adipocytokines, like I just mentioned, that directly damage the heart. So we know that excessive fat or fat mass is problematic in terms of increasing your risk for heart disease. And in corollary, how does changes in muscle tissue or increases specifically in muscle tissue by way of resistance training and possibly increasing more protein protect the heart? Was a sign to say that muscle tissue acts also as an endocrine organ, releasing myokines. These myokines have been shown to support the metabolic function of the cardiomyocytes, the heart, the cells of the heart. And they also release myokines that support the functioning of the vascular endothelium. So we know the endothelium is a functional unit. It's the interior lining, the interior pipe, if you will, of your various vessels within your cardiovascular system. And the endothelial tissue can become dysfunctional in cardiovascular disease. And it's also dysfunctional, by the way, fellas, in erectile dysfunction. Endothelial dysfunction is linked with erectile dysfunction. So weightlifting can actually help support the health of that. And these myokines can actually reverse some of the damaging remodeling that can occur in the progression of heart disease in the cardiovascular system itself. And they go on to say that overactivation of the sympathetic nervous system might increase risk for cardiovascular disease. So excessive aerobic training, cardio training, you know, 100 mile bike rides and marathons and all these things, while they may be deemed healthy, they are a source of sympathetic nervous system stress that is unequivocally linked with cardiovascular disease. So that's it for the mechanisms. We know that weight training and preventing fat gain is helpful, but what about other studies that corroborate with this study? Remember, you might be saying, Mike, this new study only involves a thousand people. Come on, show me some real data. Well, here's a study that was conducted in South Korea recently involving 3 million subjects. And what they found is that increases in lean, fat-free mass muscle tissue was associated with reduced cardiovascular events. And they also find 
that increases in body mass, presumably from increases in fat, were also associated with increased risk for cardiovascular events. So essentially this study involving 3 million people found similar findings to this study in China. So we have evidence that corroborates here, and we know now that there is a greater increased risk when it comes to having a heart attack for losing muscle compared to gaining fat. I think that is the takeaway here. And, you know, we can look at the hazard ratios of 3.7 for loss of muscle greater than 8% over the course of five years versus uh, gain in fat mass more than 2%, and that hazard ratio was only two. And so essentially what this finds and concludes, something that we've been talking a lot about on this platform for a number of years now, is we need to resist and train. We need to support and prevent age-related muscle loss known as sarcopenia. And these things are not disseparate. Uh, fat mass gain or changes in body composition is also linked with muscle loss. We know that there's this whole phenomenon known as osteosarcopenic obesity, where people gain fat, particularly visceral fat, they start to lose bone and muscle at the same time. It's this triad, and this is quite common. And so this is why we should support metabolic health, normal glycemic function, reducing glycemic variability, having glycemic variability and, and blood sugar levels that are all over the place, uh, fosters a metabolic environment that actually favors both fat gain and muscle loss. So this study helps to corroborate with the preponderance of evidence suggesting that muscle is an endocrine organ. It helps support the health of your endothelium and prevent the pathologic remodeling of the heart and uh, releases myokines that are protective. So in, in closing, after all this evidence and big jargonistic words that um, scientists use here, you have to lift weights. That's the bottom line. You might be saying, okay, Mike, what's the minimum effective dose? How often should I do this? Well, Andrew Huberman has done a, a lot of great episodes with various people recently, Lane Norton uh, and Andy Gelpin and others. And essentially, you know, lifting weights three to four days per week, picking three to five exercises, doing three to five reps um, per exercise, three to five sets. So if you think about that, about 15 sets per workout, try to hit every major muscle group one day per week over three to four workouts. And Go intense here, you know, go to failure on some of these sets. You know, we're talking in the three to five rep range, you know, it's not just like, okay, one, two, three. It's like one, two, and you're kind of struggling with an RPE of nine out of 10 on that last rep. So you need to push yourself to cause the adaptations that help support muscle health and release these myokines, which ultimately can go back and help prevent heart disease and maybe even cerebral vascular disease like stroke. So Thanks as always for tuning in. Hopefully you found this information helpful. Thanks for hitting that like button. Thanks for commenting below and we will catch you on a future episode down the road. Bye now.